A lot of the time nowadays, you hear people talking about VPNs or virtual private networks. They want to talk about how you need one to stay private online or to encrypt your data or to prevent hackers. But what even is a VPN? And can hackers get your data if you don't have one? Let's break this down word by word. A network in the sense that's used by the term VPN is an interconnected set of computers that can talk to each other. This usually refers to some internet connection, whether it's via local one or the global internet. Each computer in this network knows each other by an IP address, which stands for Internet Protocol Address. There's a few different versions of it, but the one you've probably seen is IPv4, which looks like this. However, more commonly used now is IPv6, which looks like this. These addresses act as unique identifiers, so computers can know who they're talking to. Communications in these networks are usually either done over air via radio waves or via usually fiber optic cables. A private or local network, sometimes referred to as an intranet, is one that contains various local IP addresses. A local IP address is one that only really exists on the private network, and when trying to talk to one of these addresses, the system will only look for computers with this address on the local network. Each computer talks to the wireless through a router. The router itself has an IP address, and that address is the one visible to the internet outside of the private network. Anyone who has internet access probably has a private network, and if you, for example, want to connect to a printer or some other peripheral over Wi-Fi, that peripheral will need to be in the same network as your own. If you've ever used local area network or LAN multiplayer in a video game, it's the same kind of thing. So now that we've established what a private network is, what's a virtual private network? A virtual private network, or a VPN, is essentially a private network that you connect to via the internet. Since your computer isn't really a member of this private network, it's virtual. So you first connect to your router to connect to the internet, then your router connects to another router which assigns you a local IP address and allows you to access resources on local computers in that network. Notably, when connected to the World Wide Web through this network, it replaces your IP with the IP of the virtual private network router. Connecting to a VPN could allow you to access a peripheral that's connected to a different private network than the one you're currently in, simply by connecting to the VPN. For example, if you need to contact the server that's in a business's intranet while you're not physically at the location, you need a VPN to do this. However, when you hear about VPNs online, using devices not directly connected to your network is usually not the use case that they're referring to. Instead, what VPN companies advertise is a secure connection to the internet. These VPNs are effectively the same, and instead of acting as a way for you to access resources remotely, they act as a sort of proxy for your internet traffic to go through. Since your traffic is routed through a different router, this means that your IP address is hidden and replaced with one of the VPN server's addresses. Some of these services also claim to encrypt your data too, or an encrypted tunnel for your data as they like to say. They claim that this increases privacy, however your data is pretty much already encrypted so it doesn't matter that much. HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, the dominant protocol used in over 93% of web traffic today, is already extremely secure. As time goes on, browsers are making it increasingly harder to access websites that do not use HTTPS. In addition, these companies may claim that it makes it harder for hackers to get your data. However, this isn't particularly true either, since 91% of cyber attacks are efficient. Or go sending a fake email pretending to be someone you trust, such as a bank, a government institution, a website you have an account for, etc. And then prompting you to log into the fake website. From there, they can take the login information you entered on the fake site and use it on the real website in order to gain access to your account. This type of attack would not really be prevented by having a VPN, since you could still accidentally enter one of these malicious websites with a VPN turned on and enter your data. And there are other attacks. So. Well, as previously mentioned, HTTPS is like really secure, as in it will take longer than the suspected lifetime of the universe to break secure. There's not too much more VPNs could add to that amount of security. Some VPN companies also claim that the service is more private than simply using the internet normally. Well, VPNs don't really help too much here either. NordVPN, one of the most popular VPNs out there, makes the following claim. Government agencies, marketers, internet service providers would all love to track and collect your browsing history, messages, and other private data. Best way to hide it? Using a VPN to encrypt your traffic. Hide your IP and cover your tracks online. Use it at home, at work, and on the go to enjoy non-stop protection. However, this claim isn't exactly true. VPNs don't stop tracking that much. All a VPN really does is hide your IP address and maybe encrypt your data a little bit, but as we discussed, HTTPS already does this. But it doesn't prevent advertising companies from using tracking cookies, which is the main way companies track you. To explain how these work, let's first look at normal cookies. Cookies are a little bit of data that websites can put on your device. These are a little bit necessary for the modern internet, though the main way websites remember that you're logged in when you enter a different page. However, tracking cookies are much more malicious. 
Typically, websites can only ask for cookies that are set on that website. However, nothing stops a website from including a little bit of another website within it, and that they can ask cookies set on the other website. What that means is that an advertising service could place cookies, and then it can record every website you visit that uses that advertising service. This is exactly what Google does, and even if they get your location incorrect because of your IP address being different from your real address, they can still build up a profile of you regardless. So the only real way VPNs help to add privacy is that they hide the websites you're using to your internet service provider or ISP. However, even this isn't that significant. ISPs can only really see the website name, so they can see that you visit youtube.com for example, but they can't see what videos you watch or anything else after the domain name. A VPN can hide this, which adds some small layer of privacy, but there's a problem. While a lot of VPNs promise to not record your traffic, there's really nothing stopping them from doing so. You're effectively just moving trust from one institution, your ISP, to another, your VPN provider. Also, VPNs, just like any other service, can be hacked, which could have potentially disastrous results, leaving you much less private than you were before. Free VPNs are especially bad in privacy. VPNs need some money to stay afloat, and with free VPNs, that money comes from selling your internet traffic to the highest bidder, which doesn't sound very private. However, even paid VPNs don't exactly solve the aforementioned problem of trust. How do you know that your VPN isn't selling your browsing data, or maybe they made a little backdoor for your government to see your internet traffic? So while VPNs could provide a little more privacy, it might not be worth the risks. Another use VPN companies advertise is to change your location to be able to access resources that may be banned in your current country, or to circumvent firewalls set up by authoritarian governments. This is really the only thing VPN services advertise that is actually what they say it is. However, you don't really need to pay for something like this. Tor allows you to do it for free by changing your config file and is much more anonymous due to its peer-to-peer -peer model. In conclusion, VPNs are generally not needed for a majority of people. On top of that, the main things they claim they provide, security and privacy, aren't really that much stronger with a VPN than without. There are much better and cheaper ways of protecting your privacy online, and while VPNs can add some small amount of security, they are one of the least important layers overall. They don't add much security to your data, and they don't really keep you anonymous. And if you really want to access a resource from a different location, you can always just use Tor. VPNs really just aren't a worthwhile thing to have.